Aaron, one of the aspects of this incredibly elegant screenplay is how you do not make Steve Jobs either a savior or a demon. Uh, let's talk about a little bit how the, uh, how the process went for you of what you set out to do when you started to type out the script. Be, be, you know, before I knew what I uh, was going to do, what I wanted to do, I, I knew what I didn't want to do, and that was write a biopic, the traditional cradle-to-grave structure, uh, uh, and you, you touch on the character's greatest hits along the way, the structure that's familiar to audiences, uh, and uh, I, I just didn't think I'd be able to shake it. Uh, I didn't think I'd be able to do a good job at it. So uh, I spent a lot of time climbing the walls, and uh, but also meeting with the real people who were represented by characters in, in the movie, uh, as well as several dozen other people. Uh, Lisa was really my way into the whole thing. As for the, uh, you know, he's not a saint and he's not a demon, I think that when you're writing a character like this, you uh, you you can't judge the character. I, I kind of like to write the character as if they're making their case to God why they should be allowed into heaven. Uh, and uh, to do that, uh, I have to find the things about the character that I can identify with that are like myself. Uh, anyway, I came up uh, uh, with this unusual idea because I like claustrophobic spaces, because I like compressed periods of time with a ticking clock, and because I like behind the scenes things, and in this case, literally uh, being behind the scenes, that th there might be a way to tell this story in just three scenes, just three real time scenes, each taking place backstage in the moments leading up to the product launch. But even if I were to uh, write a good screenplay, it was going to take a, true visual master uh, 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 to, 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 to make it a movie we could, we could sit through. Uh, uh, and uh, also somebody uh, who was able to get great performances out of some of the world's greatest actors. None of those directors were available, but Danny was. <laughs> You didn't see that coming at all, did you? <laughs> did a visual signature for this script and this work uh, kind of, you know, come upon you as you were approaching it? You, you send the actors a script and they're just like, I, I think very similar to the reaction I had, which was it's dazzling and it's in incredibly kind of provocative technically for us to kind of feel, can you, can you add to this? Because it's so enormous within this space you know it's like 185 pages of dialogue what can you do it's got a, it's, you're not going to sit there for longer than two hours probably we always had that thing didn't we we, we wanted it to be two hours so are you are, and of course once you get your head around that it's actually very liberating because of course you can that you bring you bring these guys to it really and 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 the job was to try and the drop what we always said is you've got a clear i mean you've got a clearer path for Great writing, which it clearly is, and then even more important, great acting. But you can embellish that path, you know? You can paint it, you can mess with it, you can have great fun with it as they slide down it, as they, you know? So that's what we tried to do, really. Um, and I think it had enormous heart because you can read it on the one level about being this extraordinary man, all of whom we have a relationship with through his products or through his myth or through st or whatever. But it's also about fathers and daughters, and I've got two daughters, and I have to say I was moved beyond belief about that, that scheme within it, really. Um, and I hope in my own life I haven't behaved quite as abruptly as he has, but I have also know that some of the things that were going on, you've, you know, if you've had a career that's had, you know, you've been busy, then you've made sacrifices, and they're not, not necessarily noble ones either. Um, and so... There's a personal thing in it. You, 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 you do, you put yourself in it, don't you? You try to. And there's loads of Michael in it, of Michael in it, and Kate in Joanna, and Jeff in Scully. As, that's what you get with great acting. They give you a bit of themselves. Was there a specific uh, danger or something that you, you really wanted to hit in each of the three acts that Aaron wrote? I just wanted to remember my lines. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it's like, it's, it, it was like really one of those old fashioned things. It was like, just learn the lines, darling. <laughs> uh, you know, there are so many of them. <laughs> and you guys rehearsed and blocked out, obviously, in, in uh, sequence, correct? 
Uh, yeah, you know, again, you know, Danny is just such a wonderful, you know, uh, inspiration on set, and he everything is there to facilitate the actors. He's all about the actors. I mean, he sort of says he doesn't have an idea how something goes, but you know he does. He's sort of, you know, he pretends that he doesn't, um, but he's got clear sort of visions how he's going visually and how he's going to put energy behind the camera, but he does everything to facilitate us. Mm -hmm. And, you know, at times, you know, I was giving him a hard time. He was just so patient with me. He would always just smile. <laughs> and so I turn around and I was like, God, when's this guy going to get angry with me? And, uh, <laughs> And he never did, and uh, you know. But what he really, you know, set out with, he's, he works with. You know, you can tell uh, directors that love actors, mm -hmm. and and he's definitely one of those. So you know, the, the setting up two week rehearsal period, film the first block, another two weeks, film the second block, and another two weeks. I mean, that was crucial uh, f for me, just to you know, to get the lines and to for all of us to sort of really. Uh, <coughs> you know, just riff off each other. And, you know, again, working with the cast like this, it's just, you're spoiled. The writing, I mean, it's, you know, when I got the script, I was like, how did this land on my lap? And why did those two other guys turn this shit down? <laughs> I was like, I was like, you know, uh, you know, so much so that I actually rang Christian Bale up and I was like, what are you doing? Why aren't you doing this? You look so much more like him than I do. <laughs> and then I, uh, so, you know, all those elements together, I was just, yes, it was, I was terrified. Mm -hmm. um, you know, again, these guys were, you know, obviously Danny was, you know, hugely supportive and, uh, and really, you know, always positive, always energetic. But these guys as well were really, you know, had my back from the beginning, I have to say. And it's interesting, when Danny and I met uh, to talk about the film, it was in Melbourne where I was doing something else at the time and Danny very kindly came, paid me a visit and um, we had a seven o'clock in the morning breakfast meeting and, uh, and, 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 and we only had an hour because I had to go and do some filming later that day and, and I just became aware that we, was, we were chatting about the script and various different things and it was a wonderful conversation but I suddenly thought, fuck, time's running out. And I, okay, right, listen, listen, listen. Here's what I will do. I will be your rock and I will have Michael's back. That's all I can tell you. And the other thing I want to do is completely disappear into this role. No bells and whistles, no big fuss. Just I just must look, look nothing like me. And that's it. That's it. And I, I, I really felt that that was my sort of MO, really, in, 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 in playing her, was to have this sort of steady hand at Michael's back. Uh, honey, not that you needed it. I did. No, I no. Did. <laughs> Thank you very much. Thank no, you. you but I would worry about him. I would. I would think, how the hell is he actually doing this? Because... He was clearly finding his way in rehearsals, as we all were, and, and the amount of dialogue. And I'd say to him on a Friday, I'd say, listen, honestly, it's let me come over on Sunday. I'll cook you a meal. <laughs> because he was shrinking. That was the other thing. <laughs> I'll cook you a meal. Let's just run the line. Let's just run. He goes, no, no, no. I'm f thank you. But no, I got my thing. And, and he was in his zone and you know, utterly self-sufficient. I mean, just just getting on with it. you know. And, 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 and that's what we all... You know, that's what we all did, but very much led by Michael, I have to say. Yeah. Jeff, the reappearance of Scully throughout the film almost feels like Hamlet's ghost to me. There are very, <laughs> in, in, a, in the best way, there's a shadowy aspect to him. There's a father figureness to him, of course. I, he needed somebody to run that side of the business because the ideas he had were that big. Yeah. He was going to change the world, and he knew it. Yeah. And, and Scully bought it, genuinely bought it. I think, in a way, fell in love with the whole idea of being around this younger version of, of creativity, this new generation, and, and helping to guide it corporately. Yeah. You know, he was, when we met him, he was a, Scully's a good guy that, uh, this is what he does, you know, it's that Mitt Romney world of startup companies and, and all of that, but this was more than that. This meant more than that. He bought the, uh, you know, sugared water versus, you know, change the world. He bought into that, and it was, you know, a Shakespearean fall, really, in, in how it ended and, and, and the betrayals both ways, and uh, it, they never reconciled. They never did. And when I met him, there was still some pain there. There really was. And that was because the relationship meant so much, not just what they were doing. Yeah. There, there is a very maternal side to the real Joanna, um, but I also want to say, too, that when I spent time with Joanna, which I did do a lot, um, 
we were always quite careful, the two of us, to talk about Joanna Hoffman, the character, in the third person, because she said, she said, she said I, just can't, I just can't see this as me. It's too, it's too emotional. It's too, it's, it was something very difficult for her to do, so we, we sort of tried to keep it separate. Um, but also there's been some play with the truth of, um, of the pattern of things. She actually worked for Steve for actually less time than the film suggests. And in many ways, I also feel that Joanna... Aaron, correct me if I'm wrong, but she's almost a composite, I think, of several strong women who were very present in Steve's life. Um, and as I say, she was sort of the vessel, I think, to that softer side. Um, but she, you know, she loved him. It's, as Michael said before, you know, she, she, she really did become quite teary when talking about him. And I, I remember saying, when we all met her together, <clears throat> I remember saying, oh, it's so, so extraordinary to have, to have someone to copy you know um to have your voice and to have your thing and then she looked at michael and she went oh know, yeah, yeah you that. you don't have so and, and she was suddenly struck by the fact that That's we true. couldn't say that to michael and that she and it really took her breath away and she was she was also reminded of a moment literally a couple of days previously where she was just going to get coffee and she thought that she had seen steve and she it, it she sort of couldn't recover for the whole day from just this moment of thinking that it was just the back of him. Um, so she really, really did love him. And I, I, I wanted to very much honor that yeah. and, and capture the, the, the essence of that, even though it was a composite character in many ways. Aaron and Danny, to wrap up, the, one of the things that the film uh, obviously makes clear is how Jobs have helped people overcome a fear of computers. And in some ways, uh, the two of you and Michael and everyone in this film kind of brings Jobs down from iconic size or God size back to man size. It really restores, in some ways, the human angle to uh, a figure that seems larger than life. Would you agree with that? I, 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 um, I, 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 I think that's true. Um, and I think there's a, that's, that's an, a noble aim as well. I think it, there's also a... a I believe... Uh, I bang on about this probably too much, but I think there is a duty as well with these people, and he's done it previously in, in his previous film, Social Network, and we, I feel this film is in a kind of lineage from there, where you have to... These people are... They shape our world. I mean, they're easy words to say, but they're truly... What they've done in the last 20, 30, 40 years, which is a blink of an eye, really, is they've turned the whole world on its axis, really, with the most precious thing we probably have, which is how we communicate with each other. And also, and this is political, is what you do with knowledge and how it is available. As he says, imagine it's in everyone's hands. And, he, and, and, and these companies have monetarized it as well, as well as it being visionary and very noble. They've monetarized it, and they need to be dealt with constantly. I think governments are often, I know this from Britain, they're often absolutely petrified of them, actually, they're, 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 because they're desperate for them to bring the prosperity they bring, but to control them in terms of difficult issues like data and you know, personal information. And, um, so these people need to be answerable. And I, and I, I love the fact that the, these kind of films are, will be made and should be made, and there is resistance you know, because these corporations want to control their image and they want to control information, you know, and they say they don't, but of course they do, you know, because they're, no, they're the ones, they are the ones who are bigger than banks, bigger than oil companies, bigger than pharmaceutical companies, they're bigger than countries even. And you just, and, and I think to be able to express ideas of them, about them, whether they're, whether they're noble or not so noble, is a really important um, element we have to protect mm -hmm. and nurture and encourage. Anyway, so. Well, your question was, uh, uh, did, did we take Steve Jobs uh, from God size and bring him down to human size? And I, I have to say, uh, at least when it comes to uh, drama, sappy as this may be, uh, I think human size is better than God size. I think human size is bigger than, than God size. I, um, I, I'm not terribly impressed with Zeus and Hercules uh, uh, and those people. <laughs> they ha have, uh, they, they were born with a certain strength and superpower that they can use. When a human, when a, 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 a when you and I can, uh, uh, can achieve uh, uh, something, I'll, I'll, I'll tell this very quickly and then we'll be done because uh, I know we're out of time. My father uh, uh, has never been a sports fan. 
Um, but a while back, I don't know if any of you remember, in one of the many attempts that have been made to uh, uh, bring soccer to America, the most sports crazed country in the world, which for some reason is not a fan of the most popular sport uh, in the world. Uh, uh, the, my father was a lawyer for uh, uh, Time Warner uh, his whole life. Time Warner bought the New York Cosmos and they brought Pele uh, uh, into play. And my father and I together watched on TV uh, the first televised game that Pele played uh, uh, in, in the US. And um, again, my father is not a sports fan, wasn't appreciating any of this, uh, uh, could not understand why anybody would enjoy a game that's 0-0 zero, zero after uh, 80 minutes, I'm sorry, nil-nil for, for the Brits. <laughs> And then suddenly Pele uh, jumped in the air, inverted himself, turned himself upside down, and did a scissor kick, <laughs> slamming the ball into the corner of the goal at uh, some ungodly speed. And my father started crying. Um, uh, and he just said, I had no idea we could do that. <laughs> um, and I, I think that that's what human size can do.